What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Coral Reef Talk. Today is a very special Q&A with Matt from Jayo Nation. If you've never heard of Matt or Jayo Nation, be sure to subscribe at the end of this video. Hi Matt, thanks for joining me today. Hey, no problem Joey. I'm glad to be here. You travel the world, you go on amazing adventures, you're a reef enthusiast, and you share your life on YouTube. Can you tell us a little more about Jayo Nation? Of course, but I think before you learn about my tanks or the Jayo Nation, you need to learn what Jayo means. I've been in China for six, seven years now actually, and one of the most interesting phrases I ever heard was Jayo. Uh, Jayo literally means add fuel. Uh, Jia is to add and Yo is fuel. I realized a long time ago that our lives can be enhanced simply by adding the right fuel into our lives. And the fuel is different for everybody. For example, things that fuel me have to do with travel, video, and nature. And that's where the reef tanks come into play. I used to do my own reef keeping video series called Matt's Reef Tank, but recently I have merged all of my passions together into a daily vlog that follows my life as I live in China, as I take care of my reef tanks, as I uh, have a new baby born into this world by my Chinese girlfriend, and this is my life now. And so I've created this vlog called the JY Vlog, the Jio Vlog to follow me every single day. And I've challenged myself to make a single video every single day following my life. You may not see all reef in it every time, but there is that element to my life and therefore that element to my vlogs. It's, it's sort of like a actual real life reality show, to be honest. For many of us, our reef tank is a way that we add fuel to our lives. And you have a beautiful reef tank in your office. Hey, thanks. I have this office tank, but I also have my house tank. The office tank is more of a complete community with uh, hard corals, soft corals, fish, uh, a lot of live rock, a lot of organisms working together. My house tank is more of an anemone tank that has two major anemones, a long tentacle and a green carpet anemone, and those are the focus points of my tanks. And that's one of the things I really like about reef keeping is that you, you can put together a tapestry based on all the different colors in the ocean, all the different environments, all the different creatures, you know, it's, it's really awesome. Whatever you want to do, you can do. How long have you had aquariums and what led you to start a reef tank? I think I had my first fish tank when I was nine. It was a 30 gallon, fresh water. I think we, most of us start out with fresh water. I think my dad knew he had struck a chord with regards to uh, my passion when he got me this tank because uh, I, was, I was so focused on filtration and glass and water quality and the actual creatures that I put inside and, and making sure that they related with each other. And I, I just found a serious desire to get into the aquatic world. But eventually, like most of us in this hobby, we took a trip to a local fish shop and they had a saltwater section. When you walk down the aisles of saltwater tanks after you've been a freshwater guy for so long and you see just the intense colors, the intense personalities, the variety of coral and rock that is available in saltwater, I fell in love with it immediately. Fast forward to today, I've had over 100 fish tanks. And there's actually a funny story that goes along with that, but I'll save that for some other time. But yeah, I've had over 100 fish tanks, everything from 10 gallons to 500 gallons. And uh, I never look back. I, I, I really love the hobby. When you're not traveling, what does your maintenance routine look like? Maintenance? Well, you know, I don't really have so much to do other than cosmetic. Every day or so, I make sure to spend my time cleaning the glass, the magnet glass cleaner. I maintain the uh, fresh water container that delivers the RODI water to the tank uh, to compensate for evaporation. I have a dosing pump set up to add calcium, KH, 
and uh, magnesium into the tank on a specific schedule that I have dialed in pretty well. I have underneath a protein skimmer I empty regularly. And I have the first stage of my sump that uh, has uh, the really heavy foam filters that I wash uh, probably every month or so, not very often. I do water changes once uh, every week or two. I use big heavy garbage cans to do that and I probably do one garbage can every one week or every two weeks. Sometimes I'll go crazy if my nitrates fall out of whack and I'll end up doing a few. But to be honest, if you have a really good quality environment set up with fish that get along, uh, invertebrates that are cleaning up their waste, I'm one of the thick sand bed guys. I like to have a nice heavy sand bed that's full of life that is in turn reducing those wastes down to a further extent. And then my sump does that final job of removing that the organic waste. I, I find that it's quite easy to maintain once you have the setup. The setup is difficult, but once you have it, there's not much maintenance to do. You have a variety of coral and a great community of fish. Do you have any favorites? You know, that is an impossible question to answer. Life in a fish tank is so varied. I, I've had so many fish over the years that it would be impossible to tell you a favorite. I have a Dejordini sailfin tank, which is the matriarch of the tank. He's one of the oldest fish I have, and he's got this docile attitude. He's the peacemaker. So if I have two fish that are arguing with each other, he tends to move in and has this personality like, hey, hey, hey. Let's calm down, we're a community here. And I know that sounds weird, you know? It sounds weird to anybody that doesn't have a fish tank, but it's true, these fish have real personalities and they change. I, I have a six line wrasse in there, his name's Matt. And he is a traveler, his, his whole purpose in life is to move around and, and explore the un, unexplored reaches of the tank. And he's looked at everywhere a million times by now, but he's still curious. And then you have things like SPS and brain coral. I, I, if you were to say, uh, have me pick one of my favorites, I couldn't because they're all so interesting. Uh, uh, the brain coral is constantly growing and has a has a vibrance. And at night he extends his tentacles and, and does feeding. And, and and you can see him conflict with the other SPS in the tank. And they argue over territory. And then you've got the leathers that you know are just fully engorged with beautiful green coloring and. And, and when you place him in the right place, he grows so beautiful. And you'd say, that was my favorite, you know? I think it's impossible to name a favorite. You can even look at the sand bed. And when I feed, you have the food that comes to the bottom and then the ground actually comes to life. You have tube worms and microorganisms that come out and, and, and feast on all of that food. And I could say that those are my favorites. So it's very difficult to say. And hell, you could look in the past. I had a Mandarin Gobi that was the most amazing personality. He almost died. He wouldn't eat anything. He was so emaciated. And then the day before, I think he didn't have anything left in his body. I dropped a piece of shrimp in and it was, it was bite-sized enough and he looked at it and he's like, you know what, I better just eat this thing or else I'm gonna die. And he ate that shrimp and he became so fat and beautiful. Such an amazing personality. And I, I always joke because I think he got a little bit too full of himself and thought, hey, I'm too good for this tank. I'm gonna go somewhere else and he jumped out. Which is very odd for a Mandarin Gobi to jump out of a tank. They're normally very docile and peaceful. I think somebody scared him. But you know, there's, there's all of these types of organisms. To choose, choose your favorite, it's impossible. Is there one piece of advice that you can share that's always stuck with you when having a reef tank? I think the best piece of advice is to just take a deep breath and understand that we're all in this together. I think that knowing other reef keepers, knowing other people with reef tanks is very helpful because you can learn that we've all gone through the ups and the downs in this hobby. Um, and also to be able to look to the future because so much of us get caught up in the moment. We, when we come to our tank, there's a crack in the glass. We come to our tank, there's a dead fish or there's nitrate spike or you know half of your SPS is dead. And you feel like, oh my God, I just, I just wanna give up. Forget this hobby. What you have to do is you have to take a deep breath. You gotta think to the future and you gotta say, okay, three months out, is this gonna be my problem anymore? Is, is my tank maybe gonna be better? Because I'll tell you what, 
Most of the time I've ever had a big problem, I'll fast forward three months later and the tank's better than it was before because I've learned from past mistakes, I've, I've fixed things that I thought I might not be able to fix because I didn't want to ruin things in the tank and, and offering sort of a clean slate gives you a chance to make things better. You know, I also think that in nature, the world, was not built in a day. The ocean ecosystem took millions and millions of years to perfect to where it is today. And we're trying to do a small piece of that in our short five years or 10 years that we're in the hobby. So, you know, even six months, you know, we have such a short period of time to do what nature has spent millions of years doing and, and we have to learn that craft. So you have to give yourself a little bit of leeway and a little bit of understanding so you don't drive yourself crazy. That's probably my biggest piece of advice. You travel a lot. How do you feel about leaving your tank? For example, that one time you left for two months to climb Mount Everest. You know, probably the hardest thing is leaving the tank to my caretaker. He's a designer in my office that drops in the food. He knows a lot and I've tried to teach him about uh, how to care for the tank, but the, he doesn't have the passion that I have. That, that's the trouble, especially me living in China. I don't have a lot of other reef keepers around. This is a new hobby here. So it's not like I can rely on a friend. Hey, could you come over after you look at your tank and look at mine and make sure that it's up in par? Instead, I have to rely on people that I can kind of educate as much as possible. But again, I left on my uh, expedition to Mount Everest and when I came back, uh, my, my nitrates were spiked like crazy. Calcium dropped off the map and my dosing container was completely empty because, and it's my fault. Uh, the buck stops with me, but you know, I forgot to top them off and, and so did everybody else that looked at the tank. So, I mean, it's really, you've got to make sure that everything is topped off, everything's ready to go and you leave proper instructions with people that you hope have the passion to communicate the problems of the tank with you when you're on the road or take care of those problems themselves. A lot of times my guy here will message me while I'm on the road or away and say, hey Matt, this is looking weird, what can I do? And then I'll give him a little advice and then when normally we can fix that problem. But I was on Everest and there was no way anybody could contact me. I was literally on top of a mountain. It's definitely always good to have someone take care of your tank. Well Matt, is there anything else you'd like to share with my viewers about your reef tank or your channel? Hey, not really. Uh, thanks for this opportunity to talk to you. I'm, I've been a big enthusiast of uh, reef keeping. One of the greatest things about this hobby is being able to network with other people and tell other people your stories and share those stories. If you're interested in seeing the life of a reef keeper or the life of a guy that enjoys this hobby, as well as the rest of the story, whether it's me adventuring around the world or my life just here in China, why don't you go to my YouTube channel the Jayo Nation and subscribe to the JY Vlog. And I come out with a video every day, or at least I try every single day. I'm on number 96 now. So, you know, go to my channel, subscribe, like if you like, dislike if you don't, and comment as much as you can, because I love to hear what you have to say. Maybe we can sign off with the way I used to sign off the Matt's Reef Tank episodes with, uh, with the saying I used to say. May, May your, your pH, pH never, never waver. waver. May, May your, your nitrates, nitrates never, never rise. rise. See you, Joey. Thanks, man. Thank you so much for checking out this video, guys. Be sure to head over to Matt's channel, Jayo Nation. Click that subscribe button for daily videos, adventures, and travel. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and add fuel to your life. Jayo. Yeah.